Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we're going to show you how to make this a Cornish cream tea. Oh. When we were making this video, we thought we were going to do one video that covered a Cornish cream tea, making scones and making Cornish clotted cream. As I'm editing it, it seems a lot clearer and easier to follow if I separate those two elements into two different videos. So that's exactly what I've done. In this video, you'll see Andrew making some scones using a really reliable recipe. And the other video will contain our vlog and journey of how we found out how to make Cornish clotted cream from a 1930 recipe. And if you wish to watch the cream video, I will put a link at the end of this one. Look at these beauties, they come out alright, don't they? So, um, this is the way I make scones. Uh, I've, I've tried a number of recipes over the years, but for the last sort of six or seven years, this is the way I've made them. This isn't my recipe, by the way. Uh, after trying and various recipes, I've, I've settled on this one. It's actually from the Harry Biker's book. Harry Biker's family cookbook, Mum Knows Best. And it's actually a recipe that was supplied to them by the WI. So I find this recipe nice and simple, so anybody can, can have a go at this, it, and it produces really reliable, consistent, great, tasty results. Hello, welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> Are you ready for this? <laughs> so I, I, I really enjoy baking. Um, this is the way I make scones, and I know they make a decent scone. So um, do you want to see what we use? Go on then. Okay. So for this, if you're going to have a go at this at home, you will need 340 grams of self-raising flour. You will need 85 grams of butter, 55 grams of caster sugar. You will need four tablespoons of natural yogurt and 125 milliliters of milk. You will need an extra little bit of milk at the end just to brush on for a nice glazing. You'll also need a pinch of salt. Let's get going. <laughs> Oven. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's <open. laughs> uh, no, Okay. So, top tip, turn the oven on before you start. You'll have a lovely warm oven then and you'll get a nice rise on your scones. So 220 degrees you want for the oven. Right there? Yeah. Looking good? Looking good. Okay. So this is really simple. And if you've got young kids at home, I reckon they could have a really good go at this and have a bit of fun. So, first of all, take your flour. I have already pre-sieved it as well, so it gives a nicer finish. So. Okay, so to our flour, we add our butter. Decent pinch of salt. Maybe a little bit more. And basically, I just need to turn this into breadcrumbs. So, this is a pastry cutting Top. So are they scone or scone? I say scone. I don't, I say scone. Mm. And yet we're both from the same town. I know. In Cornwall. You're obviously from the posh part of town. <laughs> <laughs> Your more... mother won't like you saying that. <laughs> I'm more from the common end, I reckon. <laughs> so they need to resemble like fine breadcrumbs once you're done. I think we're pretty much there with that. Brilliant. Okay. So it's looking good. Let's get rid of that. So, this is our caster sugar. That goes in next. And just give it a bit of a stir up. Now, this is the fun bit. To this mix, we need to add our milk. Some natural yogurt. Now, I've been told that the natural yoghurt helps to get a good rise on your scones, and I like nice big scones, so add that to it. So it's just a question of mixing it all together there now, and this should come together to form quite a nice, um, fairly wet dough. That's what you're looking for, so just gently mix it together, combine it all. Once our scones are all completely finished, 
we're going to be using some of that delicious clotted cream that Sarah made earlier. I so, think you should hold fire there because we haven't had it, we haven't cooled it. We don't know if it's worked yet. <laughs> that's kind of what you're looking for. So it's quite a soft, wet dough. It is quite wet, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, you don't want to waste any then, Andrew. Oh, no. I used to not want that. So I'm just going to take a little bit of extra flour and just very gently flour the work surface. Eh? You don't want too much flour, obviously, but otherwise it could stick a little bit. And then we tip out our soft dough. And just tease it out of the bowl. Do you want the blue spatula? It's a bit better. The blue one? Yeah, I'll get all that out for you. Uh, no. I can do it. You're still going. It's still going. <laughs> I'm not going to miss any. No, it might be another scone, won't it? Oh, still a bit left. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. So the next step is to just very gently knead the dough together. And you don't have to you know, don't go bashing it around or anything like that. It's just gently bringing it together. So it's quite wet, as you can see. Just put a little bit more flour on that. That's better. Of what you're aiming for. It's Please? Good. Yeah, it's looking okay. So. Oh, I thought you could. <laughs> right, you need your rolling pin. Gently flour a little bit on the rolling pin. And very softly just oh, roll yeah, it. Oh, yeah, I can see you're hardly applying any pressure. Yeah. Are you? Now, I quite like scones big. Right, um, so that, what would you recognise? That's probably what we're looking at there. An inch? <laughs> yeah. So it's about an inch. <laughs> So you take your pastry cutter yeah. and just make some shapes. That's going to be huge. I know. Great, isn't it? <laughs> so I've already floured, um, sorry, I've already buttered. In the okay. best tradition yeah, of cooking on the TV. So what we're looking for. It's all right. I'll oh, rise okay. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Oh, it does look good. Great, isn't it? It's like a pillow over air when you put that cutter in. Just let them fall off like that and it just creates a bit more air, I think, into it. How many do you expect to get out of it? Uh, I usually get about six to eight. Depending on how yeah. greedy you're feeling on the yeah. day, is it? If you prefer your scones a bit smaller, um, then obviously you just roll them out a little bit thinner. I think you probably get about 12 out of it then. <laughs> it's quite a wet mix, I think that's... There we go. So, I've made a mess. Yeah, you always do. <laughs> I always do. <laughs> <laughs> I better clean up. So just to finish yourself, you take a little bit of milk, a little bit of a pastry brush, and just paint it on. And this gives a really nice colour and finish to the scones. The oven is very close to temperature, so it's 220 degrees. The bigger the scones, the longer you need to cook them for. I generally cook them for about between 20 to 25 minutes. Probably just check the oven up for about 20 minutes. You're looking for a nice golden brown finish to these and a bit of crust on top. Brilliant. Done. Yeah, done. Dishes. They're huge. They have risen so much. Should have made some more, shouldn't I? <laughs> they ain't gonna last long. <laughs> no, I know. I don't know if I've made enough cream. I'll have to make some more. Yeah. <laughs> they smell cooked. Getting ready. Go on then. Get ready. You're going to need a crane to get them out of there. No, I think I'm right. 
Right, ready for this? Go on then. Oh, wow. Look at them. Pretty good, isn't they? Wow. There you go. Thumbnail. Looking all right, aren't they? You're chuffed, aren't you? Nice. Gone all out today, look. We've bought the tourist tea. A bit posh, isn't it? Even posher that I'm warming the pot. Else my dad would tell me off. Time to find out what it all tastes like. Okay. It's me. <laughs> it's Andrew. Yeah, I've got an empty plate. Well, look over there, my darling. Oh, my babies. <laughs> and here we have the clotted cream that we made. It's looking good, isn't it? It is, isn't it? I can't wait to taste that. I, unfortunately, can't eat wheat. So I have this offering. Can I put it beside yours? And, um, yeah. Okay. Cornish tea. We've gone all out today. Smuggler's brew. Super posh, haven't we? <laughs> Got tea, ta oh, yeah. tablecloth, and everything. We do this every day. <laughs> this is how we live. But seriously, there's something about this whole ritual that made us feel as though we should be proper. <laughs> Did you feel like that? Yeah. Oh, it feels no. like an event. It does, doesn't it? So whilst we're making this whole video, it did start us thinking about when our mums, our family, started to use scones instead of splits. In Cornwall, traditionally splits have been used for a cream tea. So Andrew, yeah. your mum's answer? Uh, well she didn't think that she was aware of scones until about the 1950s, 60s, did she? No. And we recorded my mum's answers. Here it is. Hello. Hello mum. Hello. Alright, how are you? How's it going? Oh, we're in the midst of making this video and we were thinking about the history of a cream tea. So I wanted to ask, when do you actually remember Nanny like doing a cream tea with scones instead of splits? When I was four, so that's 71 years ago for sure. <laughs> oh, well you might just be the earliest reference we can find, Mum. <laughs> and Grandpa used to go down with his container and he'd get milk and he'd bring back clotted cream which we would have with scones in the middle of the afternoon for a cream tea. I'm coming in for the super close up here. Wow, that texture looks good. We've got here some strawberry jam. You can have pretty much whatever jam you fancy, whatever is your favourite, isn't it? It's become traditional, hasn't it, strawberry jam? Yeah, I think that's how you have to do it. Leave some for me. Looks all right, isn't it? Looks amazing. Proper job. <laughs> How does a Cornishman eat his scone? Gone. We're going to sign off and say, if you give us it, give it a try. Let us know oh, in the comments. We'd love to see how you get on. Send yeah. us some photos if you can. Jam first. And as we say in Cornwall, cheers and gone. Cheers. <laughs>is a vlog of our discovery, our journey, about finding out how our great grands used to make Cornish clotted cream. Thoroughly enjoyed the whole process. It's, it's been so enlightening. In fact, it's, our, our, it's raised more questions than we answered. <laughs> <laughs>